Hey Curious Kids, Kevin here. Welcome back to A Place Called Space. We, I'm a little sad, gotta say it, are on our last live space class for the COVID-19 quarantine season. I know, we got summer vacation coming up, schools are wrapping up. If you are still in school, you got a couple more days left, but if you're already out of school, happy summer. So we've got our last episode here, and we are going out with a bang. Now, before we start, I do want to tell you that A Place Called Space, it's not going away. So this is our last live class, right? But I am working on putting together videos that are shorter, like four to six minutes, and we're going to be continuing to learn about space, the solar system, stars, aliens, black holes, comets, asteroids, all of that black energy, black energy, dark energy, dark matter, all of that stuff right, is going to be coming up later in the summer, all right, but starting next week, we're going to do, I'm going to do one video a week check-ins, could be, could be a minute, maybe maybe three or four minutes, just tell you something cool that's going on in space, okay, so a place called space, it's not going away, it's still going to be coming back to you with shorter videos, and it's not going to be live, so stay tuned, we got some really cool stuff coming up, so awesome, oh, Miss Malley's class in Ontario, welcome, Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed watching the videos and you still have two weeks left. All right, you got two weeks left. Well, if you haven't watched some of the earlier videos, you can go check those out or maybe watch some NASA TV in the meantime. All right, but what are we talking about today? So last episode, we got to go out with a bang. So we are talking about the Big Bang. What's the Big Bang, Kevin? That's what we're learning about today. Okay, so we have our universe, right? It's everything, right? It's here, us, us here on Earth. You look up in the sky and we see stars, which are also galaxies and planets and moons that we see up there too. And the universe is everything that we know about. But how did it get here, right? It had to start somewhere. It's been around here for a very, very long time. And it's so big. So it's kind of hard to imagine what it was like when it all started. Because it's got to come from somewhere, right? Well, we're going to talk about the Big Bang. That's what we believe happened to create our universe, right? How did the universe begin? The Big Bang. The Big Bang Theory. And if you've heard about the Big Bang Theory, it's a TV show, and I wanted to play, like, the intro song, but then YouTube would yell at me. So I, I, I can't do that. But Big Bang Theory. Okay. Now, how did it start? Well, it began... Very simple, and then we'll dive into it. It began as a single point, and then, bang, exploded and grew to where we're at today. So think of it as, like, there's nothing in here. The big what? The big bang. B-A-N-G. Bang. Okay, so think of it as, like, maybe a balloon. There's nothing in the balloon, and then all of a sudden, the big bang happened, and... <sighs> The universe expanded and got bigger and bigger and bigger to the universe that we have here today that we know about. So all I want to do is I want to share some cool stuff. So we got to start off here. Now Big Kevin is still going to stay here. Don't worry. Don't worry. But we want to bring up this. Okay, so I got some cool stuff, right? So we got our intro, the Big Bang. Boom. Started from nothing and all of a sudden expanded. Kind of like this balloon to where we're at now. That's just fun. All right. So let's talk about it a little bit more. What does it mean? What actually happened? How did we learn about this? And is the universe going to do what the balloon just did and completely go away after it expanded? We're going to learn about it. I will tell you all about it. So what we've got here, I'm going to write it in big green letters up my top. Let's see. It's a little dark. Let's see if I can brighten this up for us. I got some, some lights in here. Let's do it. Oh yeah, there we go. We're getting a little bit of light down here. Okay, so it's called the Big Boom. The Big Bang Theory. It's a TV show as well. But we're not talking about the TV show. We are talking about the actual Big Bang. Let me turn you here some more so we can see stuff. Cool. 
Oh, I just saw a comment there. Miss uh, Melly Classic has been watching the uh, the NASA stream. Very cool. So if you're ever looking for more space stuff or you just want to see what's going on in National Mission Control, check out NASA TV on YouTube. It's pretty neat. Okay. The Big Bang Theory. So that's the idea, the science, okay, we'll be off a little bit, that started from a really small point and they got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, when did we learn about this? Well, it was about 100 years ago that, I need my, my mouse here so I can show you, that this guy, right here, George. George, let's see if I can get this right. So he's Belgian. Lameatry? Lameatry? I'm not really good at pronouncing last names. Sometimes it gets really hard, but George. So our friend over here, George. George is a Belgian, excuse me, a Belgian physicist and a Roman Catholic priest. And about 100 years ago, so about 100 years ago, about 100 years ago, he came up with this idea that the universe started from a single point and then expand and grew to what we are at today, right? From the, the science that he was looking at, the physics that he was understanding, all the research he was doing, he's like, this, is, this has got to be it. Now, he didn't call it the Big Bang. That was someone else. So what he called it, I'm going to write it down here, he called it the prim primeval atom. So I'm going to write it here. So P R primeval. I gotta make sure. I, yep. There we go. Atom. So like you know, very like the, the first like atom, like the, the the beginning of everything. So that's what it was called. And then it was like ten years later that someone else called it the Big Bang, and it kind of it stuck. It sounded a lot easier and catchier to say. So that's uh. It was the Big Bang, but 100 years ago, like George he got this idea. So he was a physicist and a Roman Catholic priest, which is interesting, right? Because a lot of the times religion and science don't uh, really cross over too much. So it's interesting to see a religious figure, such as a priest, learning about science and then being the one who discovers that the universe started way, way long ago from this very small point. Now... It grew, right? So it grew up. So how did we know that it started at this point? Like, how did he know this? And what type of observations, like, what were we looking at in the sky that told us this? Like, what did we find? Well, you remember the Hubble Space Telescope? We learned about this in previous classes because we had the Hubble's anniversary not too long ago. And that comes from Edwin Hubble. So that's what it was named after. So Edwin Hubble was observing galaxies, right? So he was the one that discovered galaxies outside of our galaxy. And what he found were galaxies moving. They were moving. So if we got, got all my markers up here. I did a thing today. So instead of going behind me in the middle of class to get my markers, I put them all up here. Way to go, Kevin, for the last lesson. All right, so if we got us over here, we'll call this us. All right. And then we've got right here, I'm going to call this G1 for galaxy one, it's a spiral. And then over here, all right, I got G2. G2 is galaxy two. Okay, so we got us, galaxy one, which is not our galaxy. So we're the Milky Way, that's us. Different galaxy, and then galaxy two, which is even further away. So when Mr. Hubble was looking through his telescope at these galaxies. He saw that the galaxies were moving away from us. So galaxies moving away from us. So, excuse me. <laughs> so there's things in space moving around, right? Well, what was really interesting, because that makes sense. Things are moving. We're spinning. We're orbiting the sun. The sun's going around this spiral in the Milky Way galaxy. So things are moving. But what he noticed, so look, I drew two different size arrows here because what Edwin Hubble noticed is that the galaxies that were further away were moving faster, like faster, further away from us than the galaxies closer. It's like, what's, what's going on? So that means the farther you would get away from us towards the outside of the, the universe, the faster things are going. Like, oh, 
Well, that means if it's that means if you go backwards, you can like reverse engineer it of sorts. If things really far away are going fast, they had to start somewhere and build up that speed to go fast, like build up that acceleration that we learned about and how fast can you go in space, right? The speed in space episode with host of American Ninja Warrior, Matt Eisman. We're going to get build up speed. So the galaxies farther away from us are moving farther away faster than the galaxies that are closer than us. So it's like, this is like a, ooh, here we go. This is like a turtle. So we got like a like a turtle galaxy, right? And this is like a rabbit. Rabbit. So it's the, the tortoise and the hare is a story about how you have a, a turtle versus a rabbit, essentially like running, right? And who wins? Spoiler alert, which means the end of the story is that the turtle actually wins because the rabbit gets distracted. But the rabbit can go faster than the turtle. So we got like a rabbit galaxy that's like really going fast out there. And then we got the turtle one, which is slowly moving away from us. So this tells us that it all came back and it started at one point way early on. All right. Does that make sense? So galaxies are moving far away from us. And the ones that are moving the fastest, like the quickest trying to get away from us, are the ones that are the furthest away. Thank you, Mr. Edwin Hubble, who figured that out. So it all started somewhere, right? We got that point where it started somewhere. What do we call that? Like this, that thing where there was, there was nothing and then there was something. So we call that, the word we have for that is singularity. It's a big word, isn't it? Singularity. Don't worry, I'm going to write it down for you. I just got to take the cap off of my marker. And you can still see it here. Perfect. So. Singularity. Starting to go into galaxy two there. Singularity. All right. That's the word that we have for for the starting point for where where it started. So just like, boom, point, starting point, the singularity, and then it it grew, it expanded, it stretched. So maybe instead of maybe instead of big bang, we could call it like everywhere stretch. That kind of makes more sense because things are just stretching and stretching and stretching, right? So it was a big explosion, like a poof, and then it stretched. So we'll call it the everywhere stretchy. But it's not as catchy, even though it rhymes, as Big Bang. All right, so what happened? How long ago was it? So we got this singularity, right? This point right there, the thing that started it all. Then it got bigger. So this, right, whoa. There's a lot of words in that. There's a lot of stuff going on. Ignore the words, right? Just kind of look at it. It looks like a looks like a funnel or a cup with the open side of the cup being on this side. So on the far side where you see the, the way left towards the left of the screen, there's that green blue circle. So that's like the start, right? And then you can think about, so if my hand is all the way over there and then it's growing, right? You can't see my hand because it's behind it, but then it's growing and expanding and the universe is getting bigger and things happen. So what we're going to look at now is the time scale. Kind of like, okay, the Big Bang was a singularity, like nothing, and then things got really big. Then stuff started to happen. We started to create things. So what do we create? Well, there's this Big Bang, boom, crazy stuff. And the first thing that happened, <gasps> fire. Like it was hot. It was so hot. So within one second after the Big Bang, I'm going to tell you how hot we believe it to be, which means I need to write it with my red marker. So hot. So hot. Oh, Wes, I see you're tuned in. Yeah, you were asking about the Big Bang. Here we are. You're excited to watch. Wes is in Texas. It was his birthday on Monday, everyone, that we sang. Well, we didn't sing, but we said happy birthday, Wes, too, for his sixth birthday. Asking about the Big Bang. So, Wes, how hot do you think it was one second after the Big Bang? How many degrees? 100 degrees? It's pretty warm. 200? 500? 1,000? A million? <gasps> It's more. It's more than a billion. It's 10 billion. So we believe it was 10 billion degrees Fahrenheit. 10 billion degrees Fahrenheit. That's so hot. You know I like my metric units, so I'm going to tell you the Celsius. 
just in case anyone that is not in America watching is probably using Celsius. So Celsius is another way to measure temperature. And that was 5.5, I'm just going to put a B, billion degrees Celsius. One second after the Big Bang, super hot. All right, it's not that hot anymore because it's been cooling. So it was the huge explosion, right? The Big Bang, super hot temperature, and then things started to cool down because they were expanding, right? So think of it, like, let's see, what can we think about? Ooh, a cookie, right? So a cookie is super hot, right? What if you like take the cookie out of the oven and put it on a plate, that heat can go into the kitchen, right? Before you eat the cookie, because it's really hot and you don't want to burn your mouth, right? That's bad, because you're like, ooh, cookies! And they're like, oh, it gets really hot, bad. So you put the cookie up there, right? And it's cooling down, which means the heat is moving away from the cookie and just going into the air of the kitchen or the living room or the dining room, wherever the cookie is. And all that air is going because it's cooling down because it's expanding, it's moving away. So that's what happened to all of the fire, the Big Bang, all of the heat in the beginning, the universe, okay? And then it got big and slowly cooled down. So as it was cooling down, that's when things started to happen. Another thing, cool. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So again, all the way on the left, if I would reach in here and touch this far left, that's the Big Bang. That's the start. Okay, and this, the thing you see on top, on top, the first thing it says over there is first seconds. So that's where we got the 10 billion degrees Fahrenheit. It's so hot, right? You don't want to be wearing a coat way too hot. That's what happened there. And what it was, was a bunch of tiny particles and light and energy just all mixing together. All right, and then after three minutes, you can see that's the next thing. So we started to form, we have electrons, if you've heard of that word, protons and neutrons. Let me write that down for you. Okay, so we got electron. Still see that one? Yeah, let me make it a little thicker though. Ah, it's not going thick. Electrons. So we have electrons and then we get protons. These are science words. Protons, and lastly, neutrons. Ah, blue's not working. Come on, blue, there we go. Neutrons. Okay, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Those are science words, right? They're the things that help make up everything. They created atoms. So you see all, in the first seconds, there's all those tiny particles, right? And then the second part, reaching there to the second one after three minutes, now we start having like atoms. So things start to cool down and then all these particles, these tiny particles, start to group together. And they start to form things. So they form atoms. Those are the things that we're made out of. We're all made up of atoms. Everything is made up of atoms. Stars, planets, moons, asteroids, comets, if there's aliens, aliens too, and humans. Wait. So that means that we're made out of the same stuff that stars and planets or moons are made out of. So you could call us star stuff. That's pretty neat. So after we had all those atoms, then more time happened. You had to cool down. So it says up there, after 300,000 years, then we have things starting to come together to form those stars. So we had a bunch of tiny particles, then they grouped together to form atoms, and then those atoms group together to form stars. So we get the first stars happening, okay? So they're all grouping together. Things are starting to happen. And then eventually, some of the stars die, right? Some of the stars combine. Right now we have galaxies, groups of stars that are grouping together. So then galaxies are colliding, things are exploding, new stars are happening. And with all that additional energy and time going on, now we have molecules, molecules. So that's more complex atoms. So it's like taking two different atoms and like putting them together, right? Now we have different things that can be made, right? So now we're after a billion years, we got those stars, galaxies, all this stuff is happening. And then what we got right here, that's a person, that's a person, that's a person, that's a fish, maybe a shark, that's a bird, there's more stars. Oh, what's that? The black hole. So then, 
Now we got these molecules that can create more complex things. And that's where we created, or we, right, we mean the universe, created humans and plants and animals, all of this life, this complex stuff that we had. And it all started way back then with the Big Bang. Way back when. Kevin, you still haven't told us when the Big Bang happened. It was a long time ago. How long ago was it? So I'm going to use blue. So it was a hundred years ago that we learned about the Big Bang. But how long ago was the actual Big Bang? Oh, my blue's not working. Okay, we're going to go to red. Maybe red will work better. Oh, red works really well. So how long ago was the Big Bang? One, three, that's 13.8 billion. 13.8 billion years ago is when the Big Bang happened. That's a really long time. How do we know that? How could we possibly know that the Big Bang happened that long ago? Because no, none of us were here. Were you here? I wasn't here. Our parents weren't here. Our grandparents weren't here. Our grandparents' grandparents, you call that great-grandpa or great-grandma, they weren't here. None of these people were here. So how do we know? Well, we look in space to see, like, echoes. You know what an echo is? So if you're in a cave or, like, a big hall, like a big room, and you say, hello, and then you hear, hello, hello, that's the echo. So you can hear someone's echo but not see them, right? So if someone's, like, further on in the cave and they yell and then you hear the echo, you hear the echo so you know someone's there but you can't actually see the person. So what we do is we look for the echo of the Big Bang, and we see that. And then we can like reverse engineer, which means you look at something, and then you figure out how it came to be. So like, you make it, and then you go back, and you're like, okay, how'd that happen? That's what we're doing with the Big Bang. So we saw its echo. What is the echo of the Big Bang? Looks like this. Whoa, that's cool. What is it, Kevin? Well, I'm going to tell you. So I've got a little bit of space down here at the bottom. <laughs> We're running out of things to write. So I want to keep it all on here because it's some really cool information. So what works well? Green. So green's been working well. So we call this CMB. I want to make sure it's still here so you can see it. So C. Oh, oh, oh. come on. C. M, B. You can still see that? Yeah, it's kind of light. Okay. So, these are big words. Well, the first one's kind of easy. So, cosmic. Cosmic, like cosmos. Cosmic. Okay. And then, it's hard for me to write. We'll figure it out. Microwave. We've heard that word before. Microwave. That's what you put like your hot dogs in and your pizza pockets and your leftover foods to make them warm, right? Microwave. So cosmic, microwave, and then B is background. The cosmic, microwave, the background, the CMB. So that right there is the echo. So it's radiation. It's energy that we can't see with our eyes, but we can see with special science instruments of the echo of the Big Bang. So we look at that, and we're like, oh, how intense is the energy? You see it's different with the different colors? That means it's different amounts of energy, different amounts of radiation. We look at that, and that's the echo, and then we try and trace back from all that information where the echo comes from. So think of it like this. You're in a cave, right? And there's three different caves in front of you, okay? And you hear someone yell, help. And then it goes, help, 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 and it's echoing around. So you can use your ears and you can think about where the sound is coming from that's the strongest. So maybe you can hear it in this cave and in that cave. You can hear it there. But the loudest one is coming from over here. So you're like, I got to go that way. That's kind of what it's like for the, the radiation in space. You know, where's the intensity? How does it help us trace it back? Find the owner. Find the person yelling help. Find the big bang, that singularity, that point. Right? So we can't actually see it because no one's here, but 
we can see the echo. Oh, sorry, things are bouncing. We can see the things that happen because of it. You know, it's really cool stuff. All right. So we're almost out of time. And there's two more things that I want to tell you. And to do that, I'm going to have to erase this now. All right. Because I'm running out of room. I just got no more room to write stuff. So we're going to erase this. All right. And we'll finish up the end of our lesson. Because we still haven't addressed weather. The universe is going to go. Is it going to have what they call, or what people call a big crunch? Got bigger and then we're going to just shrink and collapse on ourselves? I hope not. Hopefully someone tied the balloon of the universe so that doesn't happen. So what's going on? Well, 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 well. The universe is expanding. Still see this right? Oh, a little, little high. Expanding. All right. Now it's continuing to expand. It's getting bigger and bigger. Why? Because of this phrase. You may have heard it called. Oh, my markers aren't working. Dark. You know what? I guess we're gonna we're gonna go green. I was gonna use black because black is dark. But it's not working that well. Dark, D-A-R-K, dark energy. So dark energy, we don't really know what it is, but it's the term for the energy for the reason the universe is continuing to expand. And we're like, okay, well, it's continuing to expand, but how do we know it's not going to come back? Well, the dark energy that we can, we can measure it, kind of, we, we don't really know what it is, but we can observe it, we can take a look at it, and it seems to be... Constant. You know what that means? So constant means it's not changing. It's kind of like the same. So we've seen the dark energy expand the universe, right? And it's getting bigger and bigger and it's accelerating. But like the amount of dark energy, like the way it's growing, isn't really changing that much. So we don't see it as like slowing down. So it's going to like collapse upon us. So dark energy is the reason the universe is getting bigger and there is not going to be a big crutch. No, no big crutch. So, no, no big crutch. So we're safe. And even if there was a big crunch, it's going to be a long, long time from now. Okay. So the last thing that I want to tell you is I need a prop because our universe, right, that we learned about, and let me write that back down so we remember, is 13.8 billion years old. Billion years. That is how long ago the Big Bang happened. So how long have humans been around, right? I mean, not that long. So I need, you know what this is, right? It's a calendar. This is my space calendar. So I'm going to start it back over at one. All right. Space calendar. So if we were to take those 13.8 billion years and put them in a calendar, so it's one year, when do humans arrive? So if the 13.8 billion years was one year in a calendar, try and understand it, did humans arrive in January? No. Humans arrive in February? No. March? Gotta make sure you can still see this. March? No. April? No. May? No. June? No. It's a lot. Yeah, let's move it over here. Where are we at now? I've left July. Nope, no humans in July. August? Nope, no humans in August. September? No humans in September. October? No humans in October. November, we gotta be getting close, right? No humans in November. You mean if the entire universe was on a calendar, humans wouldn't come until December? Until the end? Well, not just the end. Not just December. The end of December. The last day of the last month. What? We've been around here for such a short time. The last day of the last month at what time, though? 
because once it reaches midnight, we've got a new year. So humans came into this. Um, let me write it down here. So we've got December, right? 31st at 11.48 p.m. What? That's just 12 minutes before midnight. And that was 300,000 years ago. So on the whole cosmic calendar, that's what we call it, humans have only been around for about 12 minutes. Now what about modern civilization? So like computers and stuff and just like humans that can do things, right? Do more things. Well, that's also December 31st, obviously, because it's the same day. So December 31st. Now it's 11 59, so 11 o'clock, 59, and then we need to go to seconds. It was, and 46 seconds, way at the end of the cosmic calendar of the last day, of the last hour, of the last minute. So that means modern civilization has only been around for about 14 seconds. 14 seconds. Oh, you can't see that. Let me put it lower. 14 seconds. 14 seconds on the cosmic calendar. So there's so much time out there that we haven't been around, which causes me to think that maybe, just maybe, there were other living things like aliens out there in all this time. There's so much time, so much things, so much stuff out in the universe. Maybe that could happen. Crazy, right? That's intense. That was, that's a big, big episode. There's a lot of words in there, a lot of stuff. So I'm going to bring up Big Kevin again, fully Big Kevin here, so we can see me, right? As we wrap up a place called space, it has been fantastic. So let's really re quickly recap the Big Bang. So Big Bang is how the universe started 13.8 billion years ago. It started from nothing and then expanded. <laughs> Everywhere stretchy, but the Big Bang is the universe we got now, and it's continuing to expand, right? It's crazy, and we see it because of the echo, the echo of things that are happening out in space, and then we can figure out that the Big Bang is not going to turn into the big crunch. It's not going to happen. So I hope you really, really enjoyed A Place Called Space, these live classes, that you learned a couple things. So if you did in this episode, remember, click that thumbs up. So we're not done yet. And if you do want to stick around, I really hope you do, because I'm going to be coming out with one video a week that are just little updates in space until we get those really cool videos that I'm working on filming uh, that are going to take a lot of time that will come out a little bit later in the summer. Click that subscribe button down below to let me know you're a fan of the channel, of, of me, of learning about science and feeding into your curiosity to learn more things. So if you still got a couple more weeks left in school, Milton, Ontario, Miss Madeley's class, I'm not sure about Texas and Wes or Bennett in Wisconsin, what we got, oh, what day are my videos going to come out on? I think it's going to be either Wednesday or Thursday. I don't have that exactly figured out yet, but it'll say on the top of the YouTube channel, because right now it says live classes every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, it's going to say new videos every Wednesday or new videos every Thursday. So Wednesday or Thursday, I got to look at my schedule next week to see when I can start them going. So to feed your curiosity, you know, hit that subscribe button. Hope you stick around. And if you also aren't, are wanting to find more stuff about space, I post on Instagram all the time, all the time. Kevin Jada Bruin. I'll put that in the description down below. And awesome. Miss Mel, you guys are going to be looking for those videos as well. So I see a couple comments in there. Uh, Darshan. Thank you. I'm glad that you are enjoying the refreshing information that uh, you're learning on a place called space. So it's like I don't want this to end, right? I just want to keep talking about space with you. But we got summer vacation coming up. A couple more weeks or days left in some schools out there. So enjoy the rest of your semester uh, with your teachers. Tell them thank you. And make sure that you do all your chores when you get home for the summer. And even though a place called space, the live classes are ending, right? We're still going to be coming back. So when I'm not with you, there's something I want you to do. I want you to remember to never stop learning.